Okay, so the other thing we'll talk about today is Snapchat. The disappearing social network. Okay, everyone over there, and everyone in the back, and everyone over here, you got a question? No? Okay, so Snapchat, the disappearing social network, uh, skews young, quote unquote, young a lot. Uh, the big idea of this network is that, that, well, everyone's already on Twitter, and everyone's already on Facebook, I want to go to a network where where they won't be watching me, whoever they is. And the idea is that uh, the content disappears within 24 hours. That sounds exactly like stories, because it is, because Instagram stole it. I mean, borrowed it. Snapchat did it first. And so it, Snapchat got a lot of notoriety in the beginning that it was like the, it was the de facto sexting network. It was the network where people would share with each other naughty things that would go away the next morning. Um, but uh, the company behind it wants to make money like any company wants to, so they now are a publicly traded corporation uh, which have to answer to investors, and so therefore they're not the brash social network that they used to be in theory. They uh, are trying to be something more for everyone, like businesses. So one of the, the big things about this is that, yes, this network really is not for everyone, but I'll show you some really nice things about it that could be useful for you. So um, this network is very short attention span. So as I said, uh, on the other networks, I, I didn't say it today, but to reiterate, uh, most networks, you should be active once per week. You should post something every week on every network. More often, could be more better in terms of getting more visibility. Well, Snapchat, every 24 hours, the thing disappears. So you've got to be active on this every couple of days, if not every day. You should be active on Snapchat every few days, not a whole week in between. This, the pace of, of things on Snapchat is so quick that if you're waiting a week in between posting content, you're losing your audience because they want new stuff often because every 24 hours I'm gonna miss it it's super similar to Instagram stories in terms of you add a still photo or a video with filters or stickers to your story that goes away in 24 hours Instagram had a portion of their product, which was that disappearing thing. And their main thing was that you posted a photo and it would stay there forever. And then they added stories, which is a portion of it. But from the beginning, the main USP, the unique selling proposition of Snapchat, was that. Everything you post here will eventually disappear. And I always get the question, people asking in these classes, does it really disappear? <laughs> And I'll say yes, and I'll believe the company, but there have been instances where maybe not as exactly how they said. And there is the ability on most phones to put a, a, a keyboard, I mean a button press, and you can capture the screen. So even if that thing is only going to appear for 24 hours, I can press my buttons right here, and I captured a copy of it onto my phone. There is the ability on the cell phone if the app is programmed to deactivate screenshots. Because on some websites, it can be programmed to deactivate a right click or a screenshot. So apps can do that as well. For example, a lot of times, like bank apps have screenshot turned off so that you can screenshot uh, uh, sensitive things. To my knowledge, I don't believe the Snapchat app has the block at the moment. They could do it, but they don't. And so even though content disappears, even though content disappears 
in Snapchat or Instagram, you have to remember if it's on the internet, it's forever. Because even if you delete your copy of it, someone might have saved a copy of it, and then they can share it, and then someone else makes a copy of it, and someone else makes a copy of it. I remember seeing a really great uh, public service announcement uh, at the movies a few years ago. Uh, it, the scene was a high school. There were kids going down the hallways and, and there were lockers. Uh, one girl passed by her locker. There was a photo of her, a compromising photo of her on her locker. She tears it down. The photo appears right away. She tears it down again. It appears right away. And it said, imagine if this could happen in real life because that does happen in the digital life. You deleted your copy of it, but not the copy someone had, and the copy that they shared and that they shared. So in the real world, you tear down that poster and it's gone, but in the digital world, it's, it's back. So even though this is supposed to be self-destructing in 24 hours, if I do a screenshot of it, I've got a copy of it, and I'm gonna go share it somewhere. And when the service was new a few years ago, I do remember reading articles about that it doesn't seem to disappear in 24 hours because they had to do a backup of their service and it disappeared in like 28 hours, something like that. So for us as businesses, however, it's, it's interesting to use Snapchat because again of this, uh, of this, you know, exclusive content that disappears quickly. So for business, can you post content often and be up to date? Do you, do you have content or ideas or photos and videos that you can share of your products, your brand, whatever, that you can do on a regular basis? So if it's once a week on every other network, I would say like every three days, every two days on Snapchat, can you post something new every every time? And oftentimes these stories are like three photos at once. One photo, then another, then another. Those three are like my one Snapchat post for the day. I don't count that as three. I put them all together in rapid succession because they're also a concept. Can you create a slideshow, a story, as a sequential story. If a story classically has a beginning, middle, and end, that's a possible idea for creating Snapchat, Snapchat content. Snapchat idea, a story, with a beginning, middle and end one in other words one slide of your story with beginning this idea one slide continuing the idea and then one with the end so Victor's bakery ultimately I want to sell a birthday cake so I'm gonna create a little video five seconds of a little kid jumping up and down really really happy. Yay, it's here. Okay, then the next then the next one is a photo of the cake and I drool over it. You know, happy birthday Billy. And then the third slide saying something like Victor's Bakery custom cakes and then my address of my business. So you've got three different slides, videos and photos and text and such and it's a beginning and a middle and end of a story. The little kid got their cake, and then at the very end, maybe the cake with a bite where the kid bit it. So think about it in those terms. For business, you can use geo filters to target a location for your stories. Actually, I'm still thinking of Instagram, but snaps is their term for the content on Instagram. On Pinterest, they're pins. On Twitter, they're tweets. On Snapchat, what you post on Snapchat are snaps. You can create a, sna a slideshow, Snapchat idea, a story with beginning, middle, end. Um, 
even though snaps disappear. So content snaps. Can you you can use geofilters to target a location for your snaps. You can create can create custom filters that only exist at a certain location. So these filters are, I'm going to make my photo look black and white. I'm going to make it look like there's a palm tree in the background. There's, these, oh, there's all of these filters that really make your photos look fun. And you, as a business, are able to create filters. And you are able to set up these filters to only exist in certain physical locations, like at your store. Or maybe you're doing a catering, and at the catering, you beforehand set up a filter to have the patrons there of the of the catering job use your filter I'll, I'll show that in a moment because conceptually it's it's weird and interesting but the big unique thing that snapchat still has is that that you can create these filters which are sort of like um, how would you describe it like your your own your own brand like a stamp of what your business is. You can create these filters that people can then attach to their photo. They can put your filter on their photo, give you a little self-promotion. Your filters are self-promotion that users can attach to your, uh, to their snaps. It's not self-promotion then. you. Your filters are promotion that users can attach to their snaps, giving you free publicity. You can attach these filters to any location. It doesn't have to be the location of your business on Main Street. Your business is on Main Street, but you can attach your filter at your competitor's location in the next block over. So if someone is at, if someone is at the competitor's business and they're on Snapchat, they want to take a photo, they will see there's a filter here. Oh, it's Victor's Bakery and not John's Bakery. Well, they can attach your photo to their, your filter to their photo. Let's see some of this. Let's go to Snapchat. I think it's just snap.com nowadays. Yeah, snap.com. The official company behind Snapchat is Snap. And in the beginning, they started off again as this sort of like underground, illicit sort of social network. And because now they are a publicly traded corporation, their official line is, Snap is a camera company. We believe that reinventing the camera represents our greatest opportunity to improve the way people live and communicate. We contribute to human progress by empowering people to express themselves, live in the moment, learn about the world, and have fun together and put funny filters on your photos of, of, you know, dog ears. So what I want to show, there's not really a lot to look at on the website, but I want to find, well, actually, I think it is snapchat.com, because that's the name of the parent company. Uh, yeah, OK, so that's the confusing part. The name of the company is Snap. So here's where you go to read all about the news of the company and for investors. But to kind of use the products of Snapchat, it's snapchat.com. They sell these glasses that look stylish, but also they have built-in cameras. These are this is a is a camera over here. So if you have if you have these spectacles. You've got a little camera on your face, and you can take photos right away and upload it directly to your Snapchat account. And these have been so like highly sought after, they were only available to purchase on in kiosks that would randomly appear through the world. You wouldn't be able to buy it on their website. You'd have to follow Snapchat and they'd be saying, we're going to make a pop-up store happen this weekend in London. And everyone in London would go and line up and buy their pair. They're like $500 or something. And then you'd have exclusive pairs.
pair of glasses that no one has because you can't buy them anywhere. And I remember I've been teaching this class for several years, and I remember there was one that happened in um, Shelter Island um, a few years ago that their kiosk was there. Let's see if can we see a photo of it. It's this thing that looks like a minion. It's yellow. It's got one eye. Uh, I don't seem to see it, but there were these kiosks. Oh, now they're, now they're down to only $149. And, and more colors. They were only yellow in the beginning. Okay, so... Uh, Let's see what we can do. This is another example where the most that you can do is on the actual device. You can't do um, some things on the website. You usually mostly use it on the on the phone. You see, someone is here. Personalized filters. Okay, so they're taking a photo. They're going to attach a filter to it. Some message. Some sticker. Some fun thing to it. Like right here, this little border. You can create those as a business. You can create these things that then people will attach to their photo. So this is the part that I'm saying about free publicity. We'll see this in a moment. They, they, on the map right there, you saw that they were creating a space. Within this area, if a person visits this area and logs into Snapchat, my filter will appear in that area for my business to be put onto their photo. That's the free publicity of it. Personalize your own filters and lenses, whether it's a filter that frames the moment at a friend's wedding or a lens that makes birthdays even more hilarious, your custom creations will make any event more special. This is the part that is also not free. If I'm a business, I want to create my own filter, I have to pay for it. It's not that expensive. And if my audience, as evidenced by the branding and such, is a quote-unquote young audience, that's maybe what I want to pursue. If my audience fits this demographic that they're sort of portraying here, I may want to invest in creating some of these filters. Create a filter for a location. Create a frame that uh, promotes your business. We have these lenses which, which deal with augmented reality which a person then can like get a fun hat or like dog ears or your product floating in the background for promotion. Let's do this to see something here. Go to the website create.snapchat.com. You may get a pop-up about Snapchat would like to know your location. Go ahead and say allow. Snapchat.com, where you create, activate, pay for filters, lenses. Create.snapchat.com. Create.snapchat.com.
Okay, so what you see here is on the top we've got product, design, dates, location, checkout. Then we have the option for a filter or a lens. So a filter is some sort of effect or border or frame that you that a person can add to their to their photo or their video, their snap. The idea is that a person is going to take a photo or make a video and then they're going to want to jazz it up. And so my filter could help with that. And again, in this particular network, it really is for a, you know, a, certain, a certain audience, a certain demographic of an audience. So it might not be effective for, for everyone. A lens is a little bit more involved in that you can create, you know, weird, funny, augmented reality things in that putting flowers or your logo or your product floating in the person's photo. Let's start with filter first. So click there on create filter. We're not going to need to pay for anything, of course, but we can go far into it to see how, how it works. We're going to get this interface in design we have on the left themes summer vibes game day weddings food okay Victor's bakery I'm food so I click on that this shows me then some starting templates which I'll be able to edit to some degree but I want to maybe you know Put it, move it around, do something. It gives you a boundaries about something maybe outside of the boundaries, and then I can edit the text. So I can start with the pre-made filters. <coughs> I've got upload. Uh, under submission guidelines, it tells you the dimensions somewhere. But basically, a vertical style of an image, which will be overlaid on the person's photo or video. So some sort of branding I can upload for into Snapchat. So let's say this is the, the filter that I want, and then I can go next, and I put some amount of time. I'll leave it as is for two days, today and tomorrow, from 3 p.m. to 3 p.m. So 24 hours, my filter is going to exist. <coughs> location. So if, uh, if you allowed it to know your location, it gives you a general area. If you didn't, you know, there's a map here to browse around. So this goes by square feet about the cost of this. Question? Oh, no. I'm so nervous. It gives me a price for, like, square feet mm -hmm. that I'm using on the map. Mm -hmm. That's what I was about to explain. So... The, uh, the way this works is that if this is going to be attached to a location. So I can zoom in on the map here, and I'm just going to see if I can find our campus. So let me orient myself. Where are we here? This is the 805, Friars Road, Murphy Canyon. Um, there's the hospital there. OK, here we are, Arrow Drive. So here's. Here's us somewhere. Here we go. 
arrow drive, arrow court, here it is. So here's our building right here. So what I do here is um, uh, I'm going to create, uh, I have here draw a fence. I can, I can put a, an address here and then it'll fill it in for me, but let's say I draw a fence. Is a geofence. So now I create a shape around the building. I'm not going to include the parking lot, but I'm going to create a shape. In this case, this is 37,000 square feet that I've selected. It's going to cost me $5 to have my filter exist for two days at this location. It's not, not so bad. Let's say longer. Okay, instead of two days, I want it to exist from. from now until Tuesday. Now until Tuesday. That's only 669. Not that expensive. Let's say from today until next month. $39 for a month long ad at this location on Snapchat. It's not that expensive, but it really does vary on location. So what if, I'm going to say here, reset, what if I want to attach myself over to the stadium, whatever it's called nowadays. I can go over here and go find the stadium. Now let's say the, yeah, there it is. The, SDCCU Stadium. Okay, let's say, because a lot of stuff happens there, uh, I want to attach myself to the stadium. So th the prices are based on the location. It, if it's kind of like known places, it will be more expensive. So let's say I'm going to say uh, everyone that's, that's in the stadium right here. In this case, it's 145,000 square feet, 93,000. Now, a moment ago, I forgot already, but what was the one I did a moment ago? Like 30,000? 30,000? Let me see if I can make this smaller. 30,000 just like we did it for the campus here. Twenty-one thousand. Even at twenty-one thousand square feet, and this was thirty thousand or whatever, twenty-five dollars. Where it was um, it was like it was yeah, it's like six ninety nine for for our location because obviously here's a place where people congregate. I think it would be more expensive at Petco. Maybe. Let's go check out Petco. So the idea, the the point of this is that you're going to create some sort of ad, some sort of um, branding to promote your business and you're going to attach it to a location. You pay some amount of money for some amount of time and then people will have access to your filter. Exclusive access. Your filter will not be visible during the blackout period. It will be available in the rest of the schedule. Click the blackout for more details. Okay, so there's some sort of some. Uh, this location is not available from 8:30, 12 a.m. to 11 p.m. So on one day that I have here, not available. So let's just say let's just say for this weekend, from from today to Monday. So from 12 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the one day, it's not available. But at the other times, it will be. So I'd have to play with it for a moment. But um, the purpose here, or the, the process, uh, choose the type of 
item, so len, uh, filter versus lens. Choose dates to run the promotion. Choose location, square feet, square footage. And then you pay. So whereas something like Twitter or Facebook, we saw that we can choose everyone in the zip code 91914 is going to see my tweet, or I'm going to pay uh, for everyone in Hamul to see my post on Facebook. Here, it lets you do it by the, by the foot. In this physical location, if people are in this area, my filter will appear, my ad will appear. That's it's just another kind of ad. It's a very kind of like hip and modern type of ad, or a sort of a hip network. But it's another ad that you pay for to see more, to have people see. So in the locations where it's more famous, there, uh, there will be a higher price there. When I go to checkout, then it'll tell me the summary from these days in these times at this location. This filter will appear here, $78. I uh, create the account. I put in my uh, I put in my details, and then, and then I pay. And then it'll give me stats to tell me how effective it was. And similar to what I said about the other network regarding does this work or how or the importance of it, I'll, I'll reiterate here. In the beginning, you don't know how effective it'll be. So start with sort of like a wide net. Within your budget, a large area then check your stats all of these will all of these networks will then give you statistics about how many people saw it how many people clicked on it what time etc as you figure that out you figure okay well i think i know the area but maybe the time of day would be better spent here so you focus your um, your ads on a certain a certain time then check your stats to determine what worked. So you create new ads that focus on those details. This one is the this one is the um, is the filter lenses are the other thing that you can do. You can check this one out for a moment at the top left corner. If you click on the button there for the three three dots or those three lines, and you click create, it'll take you back to the main screen here. And this time we can play with lenses.
So this one is more like of an animated, an animated thing. These are often for the for the selfies. Person takes their photo and then they add this kind of uh, filter. It, it's a lens, and it's got an animation, and it and it um, often does different things based on your pose or your smile, open mouth, whatever. And then you've got these different areas for text. And it's just a very fun way of doing an ad, just like we do everywhere with these other networks. There's ads. This one's animated. It looks funny. It's cute. You can put your uh, branding on it. And it's for this new generation of, of users. So it doesn't apply to everyone. If I'm a, um, if I'm an accountant, I might have a hard time figuring out how to use Snapchat. If I'm a um, clothing store, I might have an easier time using Snapchat. If I'm a web designer, I could maybe figure out some uses for Snapchat. But again, it really depends. I'm a daycare. I'm this. I'm that. It might be difficult to figure out some of these things for some for some types of businesses but it's just another another form of marketing oh, look at that this map even tells you at the library every single aisle you go to the nonfiction aisle there I'm gonna put my filter right in the aisle of uh, I'll just do the question mm -hmm. so anyone in this Fence that pops up their Snapchat is going to see your ad. Yeah. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the point. When they're in that area, that's when they can see my ad. Now it does say the fence must be at least twenty thousand square feet. So I went a little small there. Can't you can't do it like individual rooms? usually a building. Here we are at 16,000. 17. There you go. 20,000 square feet. $26 for the weekend at the San Diego Public Library. Most of it. So my ad would appear in that area. It's still uh, up to you to create your kind of ad. Um, I can teach the general concepts and the tools, but as usual, I can't teach exact things to do because every business, every person that might be here has a certain goal and if I say yeah make sure you put a lot of funny things and and cat ears and all of that that's not gonna apply to a lawyer that's not gonna apply to the CPA or that's not going to apply to some businesses it's too too juvenile too too weird but for some businesses this is exactly what I need something fun and something weird to catch people's attention and have them um, check out my business because all of this is is marketing it's it's ads. It's just like that newspaper, billboard, radio ad. It's just, my business exists. Check me out at some point, please. It's still up to the ad to convince people. It's still up to the person to check me out and visit and buy. But this could be a way to reach an audience, this niche type of audience. In the grand scheme of it, it's something new to try. You never know. Yeah, you you go through this class and we talk about a lot of networks and you know 
maybe this will have a lower priority based on its style, its demographics, its character. But you never know. You might spend $5, you put it at a location, and you get some phone calls, you get some, some comments, you get some emails or something, and maybe it paid itself back. Five, you know, those $5 pay, get, pay you back. But uh, Snapchat using it, besides these ads, I, I'm not going to get into, but it's a lot like the stories on Instagram. And we saw Instagram, it's photos, it's video, it's text and drawings or stickers or whatever, and, and that's your content. And again, you're not going to do these, these ads all the time. You balance sales versus community building, so you're just going to upload a couple photos of your product, put a little happy face on it, make a little story, three frames, that's the community building. I'm not trying to sell that at that moment, but I'm just trying to get followers, build things up, and then uh, it might get results as, as I put more effort into it. So we'll wind, we'll wind it down the lecture in a moment, but any, any questions then on, in general, these concepts? Yes. Yes, this one disappears within the amount of time that you've paid for, and then the other snaps in 24 hours. I think they've started to add that you can highlight some of them to last longer or indefinitely, but you choose what to keep. I know Instagram has that, that I can select this one to always be visible, and I think you can do that in Snapchat now, but the default is that it all goes away in 24 hours. Okay, so um, we'll have a little lab time to uh, practice any of this if you'd like. I'm going to put these notes into the folder and upload the videos as usual. Uh, if you don't have access to those videos, you can send me a link, and I, I mean send me an email, and I'll send you the link to the videos. And um, when we come back next time, I believe what's on the agenda is YouTube. Let me confirm here. I put a list of the networks we'll be covering. Okay, here it is, yes. Okay, so then in August, uh, looks like we've got a three week three weeks in August we'll cover YouTube for two days because YouTube the big what's the unique selling proposition of YouTube video instant fame that happens eventually so video is their main thing Everything else really focuses on graphics, and you can have text and such. You can't do anything on YouTube except video, really. So we're going to spend one day next time on creating YouTube videos. Then we'll cover using YouTube, uploading the video and checking out how YouTube works. I will provide you some footage for you to use, but we're going to get a video and put music into it and text and cut it and I'll, and I'll show you some basic video editing. It does not replace our video classes here, but I'll show you how to use basic video editing software to remove the part where, uh, you know, I lost my train of thought or there was a loud car outside or how to boost the volume of my voice or fix the colors. Basic video editing and then we will upload it and optimize it and such uh, on part two in two weeks. So next week YouTube and then in two weeks next week creating YouTube videos in two weeks using YouTube and then a miscellaneous day where I'll cover various cop topics and recap a bit on the last day next month. So same room, same time. Yeah, everything the same is just technically part three of the class. We'll need to re-enroll with a new sticker sheet and all of that 
and it's going to be day one of the class. And if you'd like anyone, if you know anyone that would like to know a little bit about video editing in YouTube, have them come over. They don't need to have taken part one or part two. Just have them come over, and they can sign up.